Hi there, welcome to this first of a series of videos I'm going to produce to take you through the process that I took to create one of the composites that's on my website. Um, I've had a few comments and a few requests as to how I approached it. It was a new process for me, it's by no means the only way of doing it and it's by no means the, the most exhaustive process but I thought it might be worth me recording this in a few different videos just to take you through the step-by-step -step process I took to achieve the results that I have shown to others. Um, if you want to have a quick look at the image that we're going to roughly reproduce or take you through, if you go to my website um, curiousengine.co.uk and go down to 3D and VFX there you can see the final image the before and after images and you can see the large scale image here okay so I'm basically going to take you through the process of taking this CG element this model with its textures and how to composite it over a still image as I say this isn't applied to moving image this was purely for a still I'm not going to go through the modeling process or the texture painting process in Substance Painter but what I am going to do is take the textures that I've exported our Substance Painter, apply them to a .obj that is exported from the mesh that I modelled in Maya that's already been UV unwrapped. I'm going to bring that into a new Blender project. I'm going to bring in this background plate which was an image, uh, a copyright free image that I downloaded from Flickr um, that was found via CC Search and I'm going to composite this model with the correct lighting, correct color temperature, shadow direction, over the top of this, um, over the top of this image, and I'm going to take you through that process. Okay, so let's get on to Blender, and the Blender that I'm using is the new 2.9, uh, sorry, 2.79C, which is the um, candidate build, um, and it's got a few new features in it that made this image possible, and those are. A denoising process that will appear later on and also um, a new principled shader so I'm going to go to cycles make sure I'm in cycles render first um, and as you'll see now in the layers window we've got a denoising option and that's going to prove to be very useful when we come to the rendering part of this so where do we start well the first bit to do is to bring in our background image so uh, we've got our camera, we've got our cube and we've got our lamp. I'm going to press zero on my keyboard to look through the camera. And what we're going to do is load the image into this camera view so we can align things. So I'm going to come to our transform properties, come all the way down to background images, tick it on, add image and come down to where it says open. And I'm going to navigate to the image. Now this image, as I say, I downloaded from Flickr. It wasn't quite film res uh, aspect ratio, so I took it into Photoshop and cropped it to a 16 by 9 ratio. And there it is, background plate quarry, open image, and there you go, it opens that image inside the camera. And if I come down, you can see that the opacity of this image is at 0.5. If I take it up to 1, it's fully on. So there we go. Um, I'm going to come to my render settings and the next thing we need to do is make sure that our resolution of our render matches our image resolution. So let's double check what that resolution is. So again, let's navigate to the source of my file. I'm going to come to the image itself. Uh, let's go properties, details and inside there 2805. 1578 so 2805 1578 let's just double check that that's correct 2805 1578 great so that's brought our image into our viewport and we've matched our resolution to match that image I'm going to put it on 100% so when we render out it's at 100% resolution and there we go. That's the resolution set up. That's our image brought in. Last thing to do in this little video is to align our 3D camera to match the camera that took the photograph in the first place. It's field of view, it's angle, so on and so forth. Now the best way to do that is if we tick this lock camera to view option, what you'll notice is 
that we have these dancing ants, this red dancing ants appearing around our camera now. So if I use my middle click on my mouse and click it down, I can then rotate and you can see that the camera is actually rotating around the cube, not the cube moving, because you can see the grid moving as well. So what I'm looking to do is I can middle click with shift, press down on the key. So shift key and middle click, press down. I can then head up and down and track left and right. And then roll middle click, zoom, takes the camera back and forth away from the object. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit. And I'm looking to make it look like this grid is sitting on the floor of this world. So I'm just gonna take the opacity of my image down and I'm gonna angle my camera up a bit, bring it down so it looks like Tick lock camera to view now when we've finished we can see it looks as if our grid is sitting on that background plate is sitting roughly on the floor like that that looks about right to me not bad so if we would just test this out, go add mesh plane. The plane, if we haven't moved our cursor, should just emanate or be created from the center of that world. Just create a little plane, We're scaling it out. So S for scale, scaled the plane out. Just going to then get our cube and pull it up so it just sits just inside that plane. And then we'll rotate R and then Z just to see if this cube looks like it's sitting on this floor and it kind of looks like it's sitting on the floor of the world let's select our plane rotate Z and just rotate it roughly into proportion oh, I think we've got this about right let's go tab into edit mode with tab I'm going to press on the edges and I'm just going to move these let's go to local let's move these out a bit press zero let's go back to this view and let's just pull this out let's select this edge and pull it out to here basically this floor we're creating to capture the shadows from our object once it's been put in and that looks like it's sitting in the correct proportion to that world so by using this lock camera to view we've aligned our camera to match the camera of this image that we brought in using let's look, the background image function down here and we've used a plane and a cube just to test whether things are aligned correctly. And that's it, that's the image brought in. We've changed our resolution to match. We've made a, played around with opacity to help us out. We've used the lock camera to view to help us align the camera and then we've switched it off once it's aligned. And we're ready to go for the next bit. Thank you.